Matthew 17, and we're going to go down to verse 20, which reads, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if you guys ever seen a mustard seed. Those suckers are small. <laughs> you can barely see it, right? Super duper small. And Jesus said all we needed was faith like a mustard seed. That small. And we could say to that situation, get out in the name of Jesus, right? We could speak to, in authority because Jesus gave us that authority, right? All we need is faith like a mustard seed. So if everyone could please raise their hands and let's, we're going to worship, but first we're going to pray and we're going to surrender everything to Jesus that he will have his way in his house because this is his house and we've come to bless him. We thank you, Father God, for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your peace and your mercy, Father, that surrounds us every day, Father. Lord, we always come to your house expecting something new because you are an awesome and mighty God. Right now, Lord, we surrender our ways to you, Lord. We surrender our minds, Lord. We surrender everything to you, Father, that you would be honored and glorified in everything that we bring, Lord. Lord, there's different, different situations that people are facing, but I pray, Lord, that we would give you our best praise, Lord. I pray, Lord, that everything that we bring to you, Father God, would be a sweet fragrance, Father God. Right now, Holy Spirit, have your way in your house. This house belongs to you, Jesus. And we ask that you have your way. Be glorified and be honored in everything that we bring. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. holy and you deserve the highest praise Lord cause you were holy and you were worthy and you deserve the highest praise Lord cause you were worthy and you were holy you deserve the highest praise, Lord. You were worthy, and you were whole, and you deserve the highest praise, Lord. Oh, we exalt, King of kings, the Lord of lords, we exalt. Lord of Lords, we exalt, we exalt. 
of it all Cause you're worthy of it all We come to bring you praise We come to bring you praise Cause you're worthy of it all Cause you're worthy of it all We come to bring you praise
and removing all that doesn't belong, Lord. And you're reminding, Lord, of your goodness, Lord, and all you've done, Lord. You're reminding Jesus, you're reminding Jesus who you are to us, who you are to us. And all you ask, Lord, all you ask of us, Lord, is for a little faith, just a little faith. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. He has come and there's such a special anointing in this place. And I heard in the Spirit, welcome to the river. Welcome to the river. And children of God, I want to encourage you because it's going to be increasingly more important that you continue to come to the river to drink. For we are living in perilous times where around us there are increasing wars and there are increasing rumors of wars. That's what the book of Matthew teaches us. And it is a, a, of ever importance that we continue to gather together wherever we may find ourselves. In your homes, among your families, in prayer with your children and your spouses and your parents. Your brothers and your sisters. In, in your jobs, if you have a group of believers, it's become increasingly important to gather together and be in one mind and be in one heart. In the body of Christ, here in the temples of the Lord, among the communities and the states and the countries, it is becoming increasingly more important to gather together, to be in one mind and one heart, be in prayer and in unity and in the word and in worship. For the Redeemer comes. Can I get an amen? Because the Redeemer is coming. Can I get an amen? We have offering and we have announcements, but there's a song that I, that I want uh, the worship team just to lead us into. Because as we hear what's happening in Israel, and I pray that you are praying as the Bible has instructed us. He just simply says, pray for the peace of Israel. We don't have to make it too complicated. We don't necessarily have to pick a side. We don't necessarily. The Bible's so simple just to pray for the peace of Israel. And as we pray for them and we pray for our own country and our own leadership. And we pray for the countries around the world and, and the massacres of Christians that we don't even get to hear about. That we would also look up at the same time and say, come Messiah, come. Come, Messiah, come. I pray that in your heart there is a cry that says, come, Messiah, come. Because the Lord knows that the pressures are becoming increasing. The Lord knows that the battles seem like they're never ending. But there is a Messiah that is on his way. And yet his spirit is here, yet even with us, even now. He has come to meet us in this place to protect us, to provide safety, to provide empowerment, strategy, and pattern for our lives. So just sing with us for a couple more minutes as we ask the Spirit of the Lord to come. Come, Lord, come, Jesus.
part of that song. It says, Lord, come through here. We, we want to see you. Come through here. We want to see you. The Bible says that even creation cries out for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is crying out. I pray that there would be an equipping anointing over each and every one of you on this Sunday. An anointing so strong, an equipping so strong that wherever you go, there would be light in life that you would exude around everyone around you. That every word that comes out of your mouth would be one of power, positivity, and the love of Jesus Christ. For we are surrounded by a world that is suffering and a world that is crying out as the Bible says. You are the light that Christ has called because Christ lives in you. And for those that don't know Jesus, our pastor is gonna make an opportunity for you to come. There'll be an invitation. And I pray that the Spirit of God would wrestle with you and that you would know when you walk out of this place that you would know that you would know that you would know that you've given your life to him and you've made a sound decision to follow Jesus and make him the Lord of your life. I just feel such a beautiful anointing in the house. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for what you're doing with your people. Thank you, dear God, oh Lord, you're faithful and you're true. You're faithful and you're true. You're faithful and you're true. You never leave us abandoned, dear God. We're never orphans, oh God, but you stay and you remain. People may leave us, oh God. People may have left us abandoned, oh God, but you never left. Oh God, you always stay. So Spirit of God, we thank you for how you met us in this place today. And we wait in great expectation for the word of the Lord that would be imparted into our bellies today as well. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for the opportunity to give our offering today, to sow in this anointing, to sow in this movement of the Spirit, oh God. And that, Lord, as we sow whatever we can sow, oh God, that you would multiply it, God, and that it may be a blessing, Lord, to our community, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. You can bring your offering. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. A very peculiar anointing in the house. Praise God. It's hard to transition. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The great physician is in the house. I'm going to realign your spine. The great chiropractor is here in the house today. And the Lord gave me a word for Friday, but I'm going to share it here since the majority of you probably weren't here. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, blessed are those who do not stand in the counsel of the ungodly or sit in the seat of the scornful. And some of us may be finding ourselves in a place of being sidelined, maybe being stranded and stuck. Maybe you feel like you've been derailed a little bit felt like things were going really good and all of a sudden, boom, something has happened. And the Lord says that something along the line, you, you've taken some type of advice, ungodly advice. You've lent your ear to something other than the word of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord is meeting us in this house today. That as we go about the remainder of the service, as our pastor leads us forward. Their chiropractor is here to assist. He's here to bring a supernatural adjustment to the backbone of your life. If you feel derailed, you feel sidelined, you feel disconnected, you don't feel in unity with the body, you don't feel in unity with your spouse, with your children, maybe even at your work, please be aware that it could be very much an attack of the enemy a spirit of disunity and a spirit of confusion right now we bind it and we rebuke it in jesus name does so everybody say amen thank you god hallelujah jesus before i give the mic over to our leader i just want to encourage you all to sign up for the PAC Leadership Conference. There are flyers out in the back. You can go to the journey room. I'm sure that they would have information. You could scan this QR code. It will take you nothing than five minutes. And it's all, it's a very small expense. But people of God, as you consider joining us at this conference, this conference is for you. Well, Nina, I'm not a leader. Yes, you are. You're a leader in the body of Christ because you've been placed in this world to be an ambassador. Know who you are. Know your identity in Christ. And there are workshops available at this place to assist you to combat the enemy, to assist you to better navigate the waters of the world. There'll be, there'll be workshops regarding politics. There'll be, there'll be works in the church. There are workshops for entrepreneurs. Amen. There are workshops ready for uh, counseling in the church. There will be workshops ready for you and how to navigate media and with your children here as the body of Christ. There are tons of workshops and so many more. I encourage you, this is for you. This is not just for the leadership of HPM. This is for you, for the first time visitor. This is for the longtime attendee. This is for you. So we encourage you today to sign up and come alongside us and join us as we get educated together, as we gain more tools together to be able to walk this walk and be able to reflect the kingdom of God as Jesus has asked us to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our pastor John with us. Can everybody give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Nina. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We worship you. Just soak up Jesus for a couple of minutes. Just soak up Jesus for a couple more minutes. Pastor Nina said that the great physician is in the room. He is the great physician. Not only does he heal us when we're dead in our trespasses, when we don't know him and we have salvation through him. But he also died for us to be healed. Not just healing in the body, but healing in the mind, healing in the heart, spiritual healing. So it's imperative that we just take just a couple, just a couple seconds, just just to just dwell in Jesus. Just, just dwell in Jesus. Forget about everything that you came with. Forget about the sickness that the doctor has claimed over your life. Forget about the situation that life says that's around you. Forget about all that. Forget about the, even the spouse that's right next to you for the moment. And just fix your thoughts upon Jesus. out to him. You know the song. Sing it out to him. His holiness over your life. Declare His holiness over your over your sickness. singing. I just want to read the scripture to you. Just keep on focusing upon him. Keep your eyes closed. Continue to focus on him. In the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verses 9 through 19, we see John, and he's having a vision. And he says, I, John, your brother and companion, in the tribulation, and the kingdom 
and patient endurance which is in Jesus was on an island called Patmos. Sometimes we feel like, oh, so we're on an island. Nobody can understand us. Sometimes we don't even understand ourselves and we feel as though we're on an island. And John here finds himself on an island and he says he's exiled there because of his preaching. Sometimes we find ourselves in exile. We find ourselves in an island because we choose to believe in all that Jesus is. It says that the word of God regarding eternal salvation and the testimony of Jesus Christ was in the spirit in special communication with the Holy Spirit and empowered to receive the record the revelation of Jesus on the Lord's day oh on the Lord's day today is the Lord's day And John says, I heard behind me a loud voice, like a sound of a trumpet saying, write on the scroll what you see in this revelation and send it to the seven churches. He's saying, he, 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 the Lord came to him and just because you're going through it, you feel like you're on an island, you feel like nobody understands you, you feel like you're all by yourself and the Holy Spirit is talking to you. He's revealing the word to you. He's saying regardless of that you feel as though you're on an island, I am with you and I want you to write down these words that I'm speaking to you and stake it forth. He says, then I turned, John says, then he turned, and I see the voice that was speaking with me. And after turning, I saw the seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw someone, picture, picture Jesus. I saw someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching to his feet, and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest, his head, and his hair were white like wool, glistening white like snow. And his eyes were like flashing flames of fire piercing my being. His feet were like the burnished white hot bronze refined in the furnace. And his voice was powerful like the sound of many waters in his right hand he held the seven stars from his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword of judgment and his face reflecting his majesty and the Shekinah glory was like the sun shining in all its power in the midday and when I saw I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last, the absolute deity, the son of God, the everlasting one, living in and beyond all time and space. I died, but I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of the absolute control and victory over death and Hades and the realm of the dead, he says. This is Jesus on the day of the Lord. Just take 10 to 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. He's still healing. 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 Receive it. Picture yourself, even though you feel as though you're in an island, he has his right hand upon you. placing a word inside your spirit. You're set free in Jesus' name. You're healed in Jesus' name.
thank you for preparing our hearts and our minds to receive you, to receive the living word. We thank you for the healing that you're doing. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for your obedience to the cross. We thank you for your blood and the water that came forth from your side. open up our mouths. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That it is only by your grace, it is only by your mercy that we have awakened this morning. It is only by your grace, your mercy, that we are here this morning, that you let us hear, that we have breath inside our lungs, that we had a vehicle to get into the house of the Lord. It is only by your grace that we were able to walk in this place. It is only by your grace, it is only by your grace that we were able to give you a praise. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Holy Spirit, continue to work in us. carry my cross may I die to self spirit of the living God speak through me may every word that is spoken this morning fall upon the ground that you have already tilled that it would bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus and the church says Amen, 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 hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. We serve a God who's alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to go through this sermon, but it was very important to, to understand when he's in the room to make sure that we don't, let him go and that we capture that moment, amen. And these moments we gotta hold dear and we gotta we gotta embrace them and go into them. Amen. Praise the living God. Good morning, church. Welcome to HPM. If you're a first time visitor, amen. So many beautiful faces. Praise the living God. We're gonna get through this, through this sermon. I'm going to go right through it, amen. Um, real quick, I just want to add that the Women of Valor have a bake sale on your way out, so check them out, amen. And also, if there's anyone in this place that is interested in helping out our media department, amen, um, we could use you. If, if you are, um, if you like that whole media aspect and, and, and you're good with that stuff or you want to learn about it, amen, please, please see um, Jose. Jose, wave your hand. He's back there. Please see him if you're interested in, in, in helping out our media department. Amen? Praise God. Well, this morning, I want to talk about wrong, the wrong way. Amen? And how many of us hate, and hate's a, a big word, but how many of us hate going down the wrong way? It just, there's an agitation of when you're going somewhere and you end up to a place and you're like, man, I'm going the wrong way. Right? There's, there's a sense of, of just <laughs> of being upset. Amen? And how many of you still go down wrong ways? Jen, don't raise your hand, please. <laughs> how many of us still live in violence and, go, and violence still go down the one way or the wrong way? Amen? Praise God. We're, we're human, right? And in life, that happens quite often. In life, it happens that we end up, we tend up going the wrong way. And you know, for those of us, and I'm going to speak to every area of our lives, but, but for those of us that 
and, and this is the truth, and, and, and I'm sorry if I'm stepping on any toes, you can say, ouch. But the truth is that if you're so-called familiar with a place and you still go down the wrong way, you, you have become naive and don't desire to know the place you're at. You don't care to understand it. You don't care to know it. Because if you did, you would be cautious of your surroundings. You would be cautious of your toing and going or going and coming so that you don't end up in these wrong ways again. Amen? See, the, there's, there's a, the truth of the reality is that there's an, an external. The external is a great example of the internal. We all want to, to be on the right way of life in all that we do. Can I get an amen? But it seems as though sometimes we feel as though we're going the wrong way. And, and not only do we really, and, and, and sometimes it, it, it only dawns on us that we're going the wrong way when we're not getting anywhere or we're not getting what we want or we're not or we're not just seeming to get to the place that we want to go to then we have almost an epiphany or 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 we feel as though there's we're doing it wrong going somewhere please see while 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 we're moving in direction we felt as though something wasn't right. There's too many turns. There's too many oppositions. There's too many detours. Hallelujah. Before we sometimes we realize to see or to know that we're going the wrong way. Most of the time it's because we either believe or we know the way. We followed someone else's way. Or we just gave up to follow the right way because it may be too difficult and seems too long and too burdensome. We're going somewhere this morning. The reason this is is because we either are not doing it God's way because we don't know what that looks like. Or we have tried God's way and have given up for some reason or another. As people that believe in God or want to believe in a God, he has the right way. His way is the only way. He has a way of doing life that is right and it's only his way. Any other way outside of his way is the wrong way. Amen? Amen. Any other way outside of his way is the wrong way. That is the message of the Bible. That is the message of what we read. It is called the good news, right? The good news. That is God telling you and me. That is if we want to see him. If we want to experience him, if we want to have eternal life and, and relationship with him and get to know him, if we want to know our purpose and live in purpose, if, 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 we, if we want to have a joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control in our lives, did I miss anything that we all want? I think we all seek these things, amen? Amen. God says, it's okay. He says, I got you and I got more. I got all that and more for you, amen? But it's through one way, it's through my way. You can't do it your way or you can't do it the way someone else is doing it. You got to do it the way I'm telling you to do it. And that way is through Jesus. And Jesus is the only way. A relationship of close intimacy with Jesus reveals life in and with God. It reveals an intimate, close relationship with Jesus reveals the right way. But it also reveals when you're going the wrong way. Amen. Let's read in, in our scripture this morning. John chapter 14 verses 1 through 11. 
John chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe in me also. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you also may be where I am. This is Jesus talking. You know the way to the place where I'm going, Jesus says. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and see him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that'll be enough. He said, show us the Father and that'll be enough. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time? How long have you been Saying you've been with Jesus. Do you know him? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I Say that I am the Father and the Father is in me, or at least, or at least believe in the works themselves. Or at least believe in the works themselves. God, Jesus always shows himself to be true that the Father is with him and in him and that he is with the Father. Amen. And sometimes in life, we will go through life and we will feel as though we're on this island, right, like John. And, and, and we begin to question and we really don't know if, 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 if we know him like that. But he, just like he was telling his disciples, he was like, oh, what's going on? You were walking with me. How can you not believe me? If, 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 if that's not enough just by seeing me, what about everything that you've seen? I'm sure many of us have seen people be transformed. They're not the same alcoholic. They're not the same addicts. Oh, they're not the same brokenness uh, 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 and, 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 and bondage. You've seen people delivered. You've seen people set free. You've seen one who wouldn't say that they live for Jesus. Now they proclaim that they're disciples of Jesus. Is that not enough, Jesus was saying. Is that not enough for you and me? This is what Jesus was saying. He says, if you see this, you see the Father. The only way to me, the only way to the Father is through me. The only way to do it God's way is through me. It is the only way. If you're trying to do it any other way outside of me, it's, it's, it's not the right way. Back to John, John chapter 14, verse 6, and he amplified. It says, Jesus said, and I love the amplify because it, it amplifies it. Jesus said, I am the only way to God. And the real truth and the real life, no one comes to the Father but through me. Listen, every single one of us here or watching online, you're here for a reason. Because you believe that there's a God out there. And you want to experience, you want to see this God, you want more of this God, or if not, you wouldn't be here, amen? And, then, and, 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 for, and there's some of us that have grown in this relationship, and we come to just give him glory and praise, amen? But even in that, we still want more of him. That is the truth 
of reality. And those who think that they're atheists, those who think that they don't believe in God, they're still searching for something because the Bible says that there is an eternity within inside of us. God has created us with an eternal, a hole that's called eternity and only an eternal God can fill that because we were made in his image. We are the creation of the creator. So we got many people denying the fact that they're looking for something or they don't believe in a God. Actually it's harder to not believe in God than it is to believe in him. Jesus said he is the way, life, the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way. So once you come and accept him, you want to experience this God, you want to see this God, you want to live for this God, Jesus say to him. So once you accept Jesus as the way, you step into the way. Hallelujah. See, there's a process here. There's a process. He says, I am the way. Once you get into the way, right, where you're in the presence of the Lord, then he says, I am the truth, right? So you go in from way to truth, and from truth, you go to life. See, this is, this is, this is the GPS of us believers in Christ. It is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. You can't have life without truth. You can't have truth without the way. This is the way we live. We come into the way. Then we get into the truth. Ha. Then we live. You see, so, much, so many of us feel as though we're not living because we're skipping the truth. Oh, I don't have time to read my word. We're going to get there. Let me not get ahead of myself. I get excited. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way. Hmm. The reason we end up the wrong way is because we don't follow, we fail at one of the steps. Amen. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. But I got to look at my notes to make sure I'm on track. Amen. There's no other way but Jesus. Look, in, in the book of Acts, we see in the beginning, the book of Acts is the beginning of the church, right? The, the, the beginning of, of so-called Christianities and its followers called Christians. But before they were called Christians, they were known as people of the People of the way. They were known as people of the way. And then there was this man called Paul. Y'all know Paul. Paul, I love Paul. Paul's dope, right? Outside of Jesus, I, Jesus is my man. But Paul, after Jesus, Paul's my dude because I can relate with him so much. Amen? Paul, before he had an encounter with Jesus, he persecuted the people of the way. But after he had an encounter with Jesus, then he declared to the people that he once chased that I am one of those of the way. He says, now I'm part of the way because of his encounter with the way. There's no other way that man, there's, there's no other way that a man who has chased and killed Christians will be converted to be the greatest, one of the greatest testimonies of influencers of the way. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way. What is the way? In, in, in Proverbs 16, 25, in the Amplified Version, Proverbs 16, 25, in the Amplified. I'm trying to go slow. Somebody told me, listen, well, you're spending all these verses, you're going too quick because I can't write them down. I apologize. Proverbs 16, 25 in the Amplified Version. Hear the word of the Lord. It says, there is a way, there is a way, there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. Can I get a witness? There's a lot of things before us that seem that they are the way. They seem straight. They seem right. They seem all plus and nice and but its end is the way of death. See, because it's man's way, it's our way, it's not the way of the way. Any other way outside of Jesus is death. We try over and over to figure out our own way and to make our way, but we end up lost. 
we end up lost. Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 7. Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 7, hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus told his disciples, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 to, uh, in the open uh, country and go after the sheep, the lost sheep, until he finds it? And when he finds it, he rejoices, puts it on his shoulder, and goes home. Then he calls all his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice for, with me, for I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 99 righteous ones who does not need repentance. And I, I, there's, there's, three, uh, th- there's three parables that I'm going to use in this sermon today. And, 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 and I know that they have to do um, with, 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 with the sinners and coming to Christ and Jesus. But, but the Lord allowed me to see a little bit deeper of Jesus in these parables. And I want to share it with you. We know that that Jesus is the shepherd here, and he leaves the 99 to go after the lost one, the lost one, the lost one. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that Jesus will leave every single one of us here for you if you leave. That's how much value, that's how valuable you are to him, that if you wander, he's going to go after you. Sheep naturally wander. Please don't, don't shoot the messenger. But they say sheep are the dumbest animal, right? I'm not calling anyone dumb here. The Bible calls us sheep, though. So, right? I'm a sheep too, right? <laughs> sheep naturally wander if they're not close to the shepherd, especially if they're not familiar with the shepherd's voice, they will lose their way. You ever seen that video, I don't know if it's on TikTok or one of these social media things, where there's people at at a fence and there's a whole bunch of sheep and they're calling the sheep and the sheep are not moving, but then the shepherd comes and he calls out to his sheep and they all come? Sheep know his voice. And we wander. We go the wrong way. The reason why we end up going wrong ways is because we have, don't really know his voice. But praise be to Jesus that even when we just are not familiar with his voice or we don't know it enough and we go astray, that he leaves the 99 and he goes out and seeks us. And not only does he seek us, but he puts us on his shoulders. Hallelujah. Why does he put us on his shoulders? Because he's saying, son, daughter, I don't want you. You don't know the way. So you, because you don't know the way, I'm going to carry you to the place that you need to be. Hallelujah. I don't want you to get lost again. Hallelujah. I don't want you to get familiar with the way that you came because it was the wrong way. So I'm going to carry you and I'm going to bring you back to green pastures. <laughs> you mean so much to Jesus that he brings you back to a place. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 verses 1 through 4 in the Amplified. Psalm 23 verses 1 through 4 in the Amplified. Hear the word of the Lord. It says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed and to guide and to shield me. I shall not want. If you're wanting anything outside of Jesus, or I should say this. Let me say, let me, let me take that back. If you're still in wanting, then you haven't tasted Jesus. If you're still wanting, you ain't getting enough of Jesus. Because when you get enough of Jesus, there's nothing else you should want. Because he is suffice. He is filling. He is overflowing. Hallelujah. So it says, I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still, besides the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul. Oh, come on, somebody. He leads my, me in, in paths of righteousness for his namesake, even though I walk 
through the sunless valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes we feel like we're on the island. Oh, don't you know that Jesus walks on water? Even if you're on an island, he will go get you. It doesn't matter how far you've gotten away or what's in the way. Oh, man, I wish I had more of an excited church. He says, I fear no evil. You should not fear. When, when you are in the right way, you fear no evil because he is with you. You know he's with you. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide me. They comfort and console me, the rod to protect. What is the protection of the rod? It's to steer you, the, the sheep going away he don't want to. He uses the rod of correction. Sometimes we get so, so annoyed or so, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, uh, uh, the bait of Satan, what's the word? Bait of Satan. Offended when the, when the Lord uses his rod. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 20. It says, hear the word of the Lord. It says, therefore, therefore, believers. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Okay, then it says, therefore, for you that say that you believe, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter into the holy place, the place where God dwells, by means of the blood of Jesus, by the new, by this new, by this new and living way, not the way you used to do it, not the way you were accustomed to do it, not the way your family does it. Stop using the excuse that you're your mother or your father's child, that you're a product of your environment. No, because Jesus makes a way out of that. He says, by this new and living way which he initiated and opened for us the veil as the holies, in the holies of holies, that is, through his flesh. Jesus is the only way to the Father's green pastures and quiet waters. Is life too loud around you? Is there too much chaos going around you? Do you feel like there's a storm all the time in your life? Well, the Bible tells me that if Jesus is really your way, he will lead you to green pastures and the waters will be quiet. Because he is the one that will speak and seize the storm. Hallelujah, praise the living God. John chapter 10, for those who don't know it, John chapter 10, verse 27, and it's not up there, media. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep, they hear, you hear his voice, and he says, I know you, and then you follow him. Jesus is the glory of God. I said, Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. I am the way and the truth. What is the truth? What is the truth? John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. I mean, John chapter 8, yeah, verse 31 and 32. Hear the word of the Lord. It says, to the Jews who have believed in, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. How do you become free? When you know the truth. How do you become free? When you know the truth. What, are the, what is the truth? His teachings. Hallelujah. Hold on to my teachings, Jesus was saying. What are his teachings? The word of the Lord. What are his teachings? The word of the Lord. The Bible is his teachings. I don't know if you've heard lately. The word of the Lord. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the word. The word is the truth. Hallelujah. When you know Jesus, when you know the word and accept as truth, you are free. Come on, somebody. I'm free. I'm free. And I love freedom. If anybody wants to enjoy freedom class, it's coming up September. Hallelujah. We got to throw those nuggets in every once in a while. 
Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Hear this. I got to keep on going. Matthew chapter 6. We're in the truth, right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 23. Hear the word of the Lord. It says, do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up yourselves treasures in the heavens where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, say where your treasure is. There your heart will also be. Say, there's my heart. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes were healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Mm. Notice that it didn't say that where your heart is. It said where your treasure is, your heart is. It didn't say where your heart is, there's your treasure. No, it says where your treasure is, there is your heart. It's very important to understand that verse and its content. Amen? It's, it doesn't say where your heart is, there's your treasure. It's where the treasure is, is where your heart is found. Listen to this, Luke chapter 15, verse 8 and 19. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures, but this is the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 15, verses 8 to 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Hear, hear this, please. And, and, and she finds it. She calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice for me for I have, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Hallelujah. This woman's heart laid within the treasure. This woman's heart laid within the treasure. The silver coin was treasure to her. Notice that she turned on the lamp and searched carefully. Notice that she lit up the lamp and she searched carefully. Please, somebody. Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, 105 says, The word, your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light on my path. Oh, do you see how the Lord is connecting all this? Your word is a lamp unto my feet. You need direction in your life? Get in your word. You need some some light to, to get the darkness out? Get in your word. You keep on going down the wrong path? Get in your word. The word is a lamp. The word is the truth. The truth is a lamp unto every aspect of our life, men and women of God. You will be lost without the light of the truth of Jesus. You will be lost without the truth of the word. Hallelujah. You know, scholars say that, some scholars say that this portion, this parable, you know, outside of, of, of we know that it's Jesus and someone come and repent, right? Scholars say that, that it, it, it can also be referenced here, um, the Holy Spirit. Listen, this is powerful. Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, right? Jesus said, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, but I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. For what? To, to remind you of everything I taught you. Right? That's biblical, Right? So he sent down the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is empowerment and the testament of Jesus, the word. Amen? Right? Okay. So the Holy Spirit used the truth of the word to light up the lamp. Listen, it's beautiful. The Holy Spirit lit up the truth of the word to help find the treasure. You're not getting it? The Holy Spirit used the truth of the word to find the treasure. Oh, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. The Holy Spirit lit up the truth of the word to find the treasure. What was the treasure? The silver coin. You know that every coin... 
has an image on it? Every coin. That's why Jesus said, um, give unto Caesar what belongs unto Caesar. So every coin has an image on it. That image identifies what that is and its value. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, somebody's getting it now, huh? Hallelujah. And because Jesus, because God loves you so much, he gave his son as the way so that you can know the truth. He sent down the Holy Spirit to empower the truth so that the truth will guide you and lead you to the identity and the purpose you were created in. To understand your value. Is somebody getting this this morning? Oh, man, I'll tell you what. I don't know. My wife heard me yesterday. I was on my desk finalizing this, and I was so excited. And I was like, yeah, because the word excites me, man. It brings me life every single moment. Sometimes I had some dead seconds in my life. I'm in this flesh. We all do. Let's keep it real. That's why it's important to get into this so that the deadness of the flesh doesn't consume the spirit. Hallelujah. I told myself I wasn't going to get loud, but I, I get so excited, man. One day I'm going to preach a message. I just want to be. Mm. The Holy Spirit, if you don't get into your word, the Holy, there's no substance for the Holy Spirit to light up. We got so many men and women that proclaim to be believers in Christ that struggle, don't know their identity, don't know their value, don't know their purpose. I'm sorry to tell you there's only one reason for that. You're not getting into your word. You're coming on Sunday. You're feeding off the sermon on Sunday. That's not good enough. Try eating one day a week. You're going to die, people. <laughs> or, you, or, or Sunday and Tuesday is not good enough for those that come to HPM. No, every day of the week you got to seek the truth. You got to get into the truth. I promise you, if you get into the truth, you're going to know your identity. You're going to know your value. You're going to know your purpose. No pastor has to tell you what you're created for. We can be wrong. Don't you know that? We're always quick to seek the wisdom of man before we seek the truth of the word. I'm not saying God doesn't use pastors and leaders and peoples and prophets and evangelists. No, I'm not saying that's not what I'm saying. But the reason he's using those is because they seek him. He could use you the same way. Listen, we got people, and, and, and no offense if this is anyone here, we got people that, 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 that feel as though their, their house has strongholds. Come on, bring a whole revival. Let's pray for my house, anointed. If you feel that way, it's because you're not getting in your word. Because the same power that you're calling the brothers and sisters to come over with is the same power that died, that is implanted in you. You don't need special people. You need the special one. You don't need no anointing oil. What did they do when the angel of death in the Old Testament was going by? He said, put blood on the doorpost. You know what that blood is today? It's Jesus inside of you. As a son and a daughter of the Most High God, every time you walk in and out of your house, you're putting blood on the doorpost. You don't need nobody to come and anoint your house. You are the anointing within your house. That is the truth. That is the truth. The reason is you're not getting enough of this, so there's some empty areas in your life that you're carrying inside your house, uh, and they're living with you. But if you get full of this, there's no area for any anything else to come inside of your house. When I'm not 
talking about being possessed, but you can be oppressed. Hallelujah. Oh, they'll try to leech on to any area that's a void in your life. No, 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 not at my house. You got to stop at the door. You can't come into my house. Hallelujah. There's no room for you in this house. This is important, people. If you're struggling with this, I promise you, man, get in your word. This is not a myth. This is not a fairy tale. This is the truth. This is what he died for. You're seeking God to, to deliver you, to cleanse your house. Well, he said the only way I'm going to do that is through Jesus. Praise the living God. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. Hang with me, please. This is going to, this is going to, this is going to, this is, you don't want to leave. You never want to leave before the sermon ends or before the Lord does his ministering. Please, don't be anxious to get to anywhere else that doesn't have no tangible power in your life. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is the life? What is life? Pastor, what's life? This life is how, this life is to know and have relationship with God the Father. That is life, period. Not a master's, not a bachelor's, not a 401k, not none of that stuff. That's not life, men and women of God. Life is you can be broke, you can have nothing, but all you need is God. Hallelujah. That is life. He wants to give us the rest, but it first starts there. Amen. That's why he says that we got to die to self. We got to be empty. Hmm. So what's this life? Luke chapter 15. Let's, we're going to move on. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 24. Luke 15, 11 to 24. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger said, there was a man, one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estates. He divided his property between them. Not for long, this is the story of the prodigal son, right? Not for long, the younger son got uh, altogether all that he had and he sent off in the distance, right? I'm, I'm going to go through this for the sake of time, right? And, and it goes on that he went, he spent everything. He partied it up. There was a severe famine. He was hungry. He found himself in a field of pigs, field of pigs, the pig sty that represents the world. He was hungry. This wasn't about a, a tangible food. It was, it, it, this is all in the spirit. 17, verse 17, verse 17, it says, when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, he said, see, there was a point in his life where he got tired. He made a decision. There was a transfer in the mind to make a decision. He came to his senses means he made a decision. How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? Here I am starving to death. I will set out. You see, first it starts with a decision, but then we got to take that decision into action. He thought about it, then he got up. Too many of us think about it, but we stay down. Uh, you ain't getting nowhere like that. He made a conscious decision, and then he got up. He said, I'm going to go back. He said, not only did he get, make a kind of decision, get up, but he went back. Hallelujah. I'm going back to my father, he said. Then he goes to his father, father, I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like uh, your hired servants. He got up and he went to his father. Listen to this. But, but while he was still a long way off, while he was still at Walmart, His daddy was looking at him. He's like, my son's over there, and I see him. See, because a father knows his son. A shepherd knows his sheep. And he says, that's my son. He's coming back. <laughs> he 
He's coming back. He's coming back. I'm not gonna wait him. I'm not gonna wait for him to get here. I'm gonna go. So while he was still a long way off, are you a long way off this morning? His father saw him. He's got his eyes on you. He was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son. He didn't walk to his son. He ran to his son. And he threw his arms around him and he kissed them. The Bible says that, I said this this morning, the Bible says that we greet each other with a heavenly kiss. He greeted his son with a heavenly kiss. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, 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 quick. Bring the best, uh, the best robe and put it on him. Hallelujah. And put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Hallelujah. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for my son that was once lost. Oh, is now found. Jesus said, he is the light. He is the way to the Father. We were created in the image to have relationship with our creator. God desperately wants us to come back home. He is desperately waiting. I can see him right now on the edge of heaven. Can you picture God at the edge of heaven? Looking for his lost son and daughter. Can you just picture him? It's God. He's on the edge of heaven waiting for you to come back. John chapter 17, we're closing. We're closing, I promise. We're closing. Give me 10 more minutes, please. Please. Keep that music going, please. Or, or, or we can have our, our, our worship team begin to, to help minister. John 17, verses 1 through 5. John 17. This is Jesus on the cross, right? After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven. This is Jesus on the cross, and he had said some other words. Then he, then he says this. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those who grant, who given him, who have given him. Now, this is eternal life that you that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth, but finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus died so that you may know the one and only true God. Jesus died and Jesus was sent so that you can have life. Jesus is the only way to the truth and life. If you do not have Jesus, you have no life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. One more scripture. Two more. Okay. John chapter 11. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. John chapter 11, verses 17 to 27. This is when Jesus, this is about Jesus with Martha and Lazarus. Okay. I'm going to skip a couple verses. But Martha was upset. She was like, if you would have been here, he would have been, he wouldn't have died. Right. So Jesus comes. And, and Jesus said on verse 27, 23, he says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I, 
I am. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, the one who believes in me. Do you believe in him this morning? The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He asked her. But he's asking you right now, do you believe this? Do you really believe this? Do you believe this, men and women of God? Do you really believe Jesus is the only way, the real truth, and the real life? Do you believe this? He's asking you today. It's the only thing that matters in life, men and women. It's the only thing that matters. Everything else will fall in place within your life when it's all about Jesus. Worried about a career? It'll fall in place. You're worried about a new, or not new, but if you're young, you haven't been married, or older, never been married, right, and you're seeking that, seek Jesus. Marry Jesus first. <laughs> Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus said, I am the only way, the real truth, and the real life. No one comes to me but to the, fa to the Father. I keep on saying that Jesus is the glory of God. Listen to me. There's a difference between presence and glory. I shared this upstairs. There's a difference between presence and glory. See, the presence is something that, that is, presence of God is something that is present. When something is present, it's present. Amen? You follow me? It's tangible. You see, the presence of God is the Holy Spirit. He's tangible. You can feel him. You can see him. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. We see him move. Moses said to God, I don't want to go anywhere unless your presence goes with me. Moses said, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go anywhere unless your presence go with me. But Lord, even if your presence go with me, I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. God says, you want to see my glory? Go into the cleft of that rock over there. He said, because you can't see my glory because you'll die. He says, but if you go in the cleft of the rock, my glory will pass you. Oh, you've heard me say this before. Do you know what the cleft in the rock is? Who's the rock? Ah, come on, somebody. He said if you go in the cleft of the rock, the cleft was the, 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 the middle area of the rock. It was a narrow, oh, come on, somebody. It was a narrow spot of the rock. It was the only place in the rock uh, that will keep uh, Moses from dying, but he can experience the glory. And after he experienced the glory, he came down from the mountain and he was radiant. They were scared of him because he was glowing in the glory of the almighty God. Jesus. Oh, my, 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 my. Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3. Hear the word of the Lord. It says the sun is the radiance of God's glory. Hallelujah. The exact. Uh, not just a little bit, not just that. It says the exact representation of his being. Jesus is all the glory of God. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. <laughs> if you're not getting this. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand. Of the majesty in heaven. Jesus is the glory of God. You see, when the glory of God comes in the room, when Jesus steps in the room, everything changes. Stand with me, please. When Jesus comes in the room, see, it's one thing. See, I was sharing also upstairs with the pastor that the, the, the psalm, I forgot the psalm, the psalm that talks about enter into his gates 
with thanksgiving and his, and, and his courts with praise. I'm starting to understand that. I've been, I've been, I've been learning this through this, this, this pastor, this teacher, right? And, and, and I'm getting it now what this psalm is saying, right? That, that when we enter in, right, in the presence Oh, with, with, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, when we come before God with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and we lift up, oh, thanksgiving unto him, it brings us into a certain place. We got to start everything with thanksgiving, but then we got to transition to praise because praise brings us into the court and there's something about courtship hallelujah there's something that happens within the court hallelujah I don't know if you know but the Old Testament within the court hallelujah it held all the tabernacle all the holies of holies was there hallelujah it was the glory of God hallelujah oh it's after Thanksgiving and coming in with praise that we begin to experience the glory which is Jesus Everything changes. Listen, Paul had an encounter with glory. Paul didn't have an encounter with presence. If you read your word, it, it, it says that, 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 that a light, like a lightning flashed around him. Was that not, did Moses not experience the glory of God like a light? And then he came down shining like a light? Paul, his encounter was not changed by the presence of God, it was by the glory. And then after he was, after he had an encounter with the glory of God, he was led by the presence of God. And that's why he said, I come, oh, in the way of the way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We need to be a church who consistently seeks Jesus while we move with the presence by the Holy Spirit. If we want to experience glory in our lives, in our services, in our prayer, in our, in our teachings, oh, we got to seek Jesus in the midst of the presence with the Holy Spirit. But we can't do that unless we get into this. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. We're going to wrap it up. Is there anyone here? Whatever's on your heart, you can begin to sing it. Is there anyone here that doesn't know Jesus? Please, every, every, every eyes closed, head bowed. If there's anybody in this place that's never accepted Jesus... As your Lord and Savior. See, the Bible says that, that the, in order to be saved, we got to confess. We got to believe within our hearts that Jesus is the Son of God. And we got to confess it with our mouth. So if there's anybody in this place who's never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, can you just please raise your hand? Now, we're going to end this. We're going to end this. If there's anybody in this place that knew Jesus, let me put it this way. Is there any particle sons in the house? That doesn't mean, that doesn't exclude women. Please, when the Bible talks about man, it talks about mankind. When he talks about the prodigal son, yeah, he was, he, the illustration is a son, but it means sons and daughters. Do we have any prodigal sons and daughters in the house that say, you know what? I recognize that God is on the edge of heaven waiting for me. And I want to come back to him. Is there anybody here? Raise your hand, please. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we worship him? This is the final call. We're going to end service. As the worship team begins to sing, is there any, anybody in this place, you know Christ, you live with Christ, 
but you've been making wrong, you've been in the wrong way. You've been making wrong decisions. You've been going down the wrong road. You've been going down one ways. When God designed you to go one way, you've been going the opposite way. If that's you in this place and you want to make it right, Listen, there's nothing special about this altar. There's nothing special about these four walls. It's a representation of the house of God. It's a representation of the altar of the Lord. Amen? But we believe, we believe that with every step of faith, you coming up to this altar, there is something that's taking place. If there's anybody here who's been making wrong decisions, wrong choices, going the wrong way, in the spirit, these these coming to the altar, these rows, I'm going to declare them the right way. If that's you, please come up and let's pray. Don't worry about who's next to you. Praise be to God. Come on, worship him. 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 Come on, worship Jesus, church. Worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. You know, the world tells us it's too late. It's too late you missed the bus. You're too old. You're too young. There's so many excuses that the world puts upon us. But God says, God says, there's only one thing that matters, and that is my son Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes, he did. Give me a high five. Yes, he did. He made everything. There's not one thing he didn't make. Amen. This young man just confessed. He says, I know God. He made everything. Yes, he did. He made everything. For us to experience everything, there's only one way. That is through Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to lay any hands. Just want to ask you guys just to bow your heads in prayer. Amen. Worship team, please sing. And I just want you, this is between you and him. It's between you and him. There's nothing that man can do, can say. It's between you and him. This is your opportunity to just come before him. Ask him for forgiveness for all the wrong decisions. And just to ask him, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to lead you and guide you. Turn every decision that you've made that went the wrong way to turn it right to go the right way. Because he is the God of forgiveness. He died over 2,000 years ago. He knows everything you've done. He knows the, the very hairs on your head. He's collected every tear in a jar. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare... Yes, he is. And he's here, here too. He lives in your heart. That's right. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every crooked path in your life, every crooked path in your life is made straight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every path that you have made crooked is going to be straightened. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you receive it? Give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah. That's all you got to do is believe it, declare it, and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Church is nothing better than Jesus. There's nothing better than Jesus. There's nothing better than Jesus. It's never too late. Listen, the only time it's too late is when death knocks on our door. 
and we don't know when that is. Only he knows. But until then, and I end with this, that doesn't mean that we take the grace of God and we keep on using it as a card to sin. No, 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 no. Don't mock Jesus like that. He's given us the opportunity to make things straight, to get on the road, but he also gives us the strength. He said, no man has, will ever be tempted, and if there is, I will make a way out. So let's just, let's just thank Jesus as we close this evening. Let's just thank Jesus. Let's thank Jesus for these young men and women here that decided to say, you know what? My, my paths have been crooked, but today in the name of Jesus, you make them straight. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Father God, we thank you for your son. We thank you, oh, for not holding back. We thank you for giving us all, for giving us everything we need that is through your son. Thank you, Jesus, that you are everything, that you are the glory of the one and only God, that you intercede on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us here. May you continue to be with us, carry us, continue to lead us down the straight road. In the mighty name of Jesus, the church says amen, amen. God bless you, church. Go in peace.